Hi, welcome to our latest video. This old fallen beech tree gave us the inspiration to make a solid two-seater picnic bench which would look something like this. So first we have the job of chopping up and removing all the thinner boughs and branches, leaving us with just the tree trunk. We then cut the tree trunk into the biggest single straight section we can manage. And to do this, we deploy the big guns. A still 880 coupled up to a three foot bar and a razor sharp chain. Job done. Now we have the challenge of getting it home. We managed to winch it onto the back of a trailer. Finally, we get it loaded and strapped down. Then we reward ourselves with a quick brew made with Kelly's kettle. As a matter of interest, we were able to get it on a local weighbridge the next day, and after taking the tear weight of the vehicle and trailer, it came back at weighing 1,020 kilos, so just over a tonne. After leaving it for nearly a whole year to dry out, we decide that now, in April 2018, we should finally get round to converting this big lump of beach into a, pe into a picnic bench as per our original plans. So the old Massey Ferguson digger is fired up and put to task once again. Our first task is to mill a flat surface on what will be the underside of the picnic bench so that when it is then turned over it has a flat surface on which to sit on. Once we have the mill rails fitted and secured, we need to fit the carriage which will run along the rails with the chainsaw bolted to it. The Edmo patent planking mill has been trialled in an earlier video called the milling attachment on my channel. Why not check it out after watching this? Yeah. So now we're all set up with a chainsaw attached to the mill. Mike fires it up and does the first cut. Here we are using a still 660 with a 36 inch bar and a special chain called a rip chain, which is used for doing parallel milling cuts. Halfway through, we realise we have a problem, as the carriage won't pass over the log due to its shape. So while Mike refuels, I cut groove in the log so the threaded mountain bar can pass through it. Finally, we get to the end of the first cut and our flat bottom is formed. Now we need to turn it over 
so that it is sitting flat on its bottom, so to speak. Then we place it on a height adjustable mobile platform so we can work on it without bending our backs. Uh, what height would you like it, sir? <laughs> We then need to jet wash it to remove all the soil debris which could have small stone particles within it which would prematurely blunt in our saws. We then need to mark out where all our cups are going to be. Once we're happy with the position of all our marking out, it's time to start cutting. Once again we decide to deploy the big guns and fire up the old 880. Incidentally, this is an example of the world's biggest production chainsaw. With the power of eight and a half horses at your right forefinger, it makes it a formidable tool. We found that the best way to achieve a neat joint where two cups would meet was for one of us to guide the other to ensure we didn't overcut. We repeated this process on the two diagonal cuts that would form the two seat backs and the two straight cuts that would form the edge of the table on the front of the seats. We then decided that the best thing to do next was to remove some excess material in the area that would become the space between the tabletop and the seat back. To do this we had to perform what's known as a bore-in cut. This is where you push the end of the chainsaw into the wood in a boring in kind of effect. <laughs> When performing bore in cuts, there is a danger of something called kickback. Kickback is where the chainsaw has a tendency to kick back if you use the top quadrant of the end of the bar. We decided that it would be safer to start the bore in cut with a smaller saw than use the big powerful saw once we had made a start. Do, shouldn't it? If we can just get those fingers behind it or something. After removing one lump of excess material, we repeat the process on the other side. Our next task is to cut two more bore in cuts 
which will form either side of the table up. We use the same principle of starting the cut with the small spill 024 saw and continuing with the big 880 which we decided to use for all the freehand cuts. I positioned myself above the log so I could guide Mike with the saw to ensure we made the cuts in line with our markings. Yeah, that's alright that. I'll stay off to one side but I'll stay up here. Yeah? next series of cuts were two horizontal cuts that would form the bottom of the floor wells either side of the table uprights. Once again we used a small 024 saw to begin the boring cuts with one of us giving visual guidance as to where the saw needed to be to make a flat cut. We then follow it up with the big saw. Notice how Mike is using his knee to push the saw in. We use the same principle of visual guidance to help the chainsaw operator get the saw horizontal at the start of the cut from a side on elevation and also at the end of the cut from an end on elevation. Now that we have done most of the freehand cuts, we now need to do a cut which will give us our tabletop surface. As this is an important cut in terms of how the finished product will look, we need to use a planking mill once again to ensure we have a perfectly flat and smooth tabletop. Do you want me on the handle then? You're going to have to, yeah. Just keep the tension on. Yeah, so you do. We're going to have to both do it, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, just, you'll feel, get the feel of it, obviously it's not that hard, is it? Right. Now, because of the way that we have to mount the saw on the carriage, it meant that this now became a two-man Our next cuts were to be the undersides of the table. 
As this was not going to be a visible cut, we decided to do it freehand. We marked the cut line in chalk and we used a sacrificial piece of 3x2 wedged against the chalk line. This was to support the weight of the bar as we started the cut. A big chainsaw can be very heavy when you're trying to do a precision cut. We repeated the same process on the other side. I might just need to join this up a little bit here actually. Yeah, same at this end. Yeah, you could go up on that one. Our last two cuts were to bring the top of the seat down to the correct height. The cut that we had already done was purposely too high and only served the purpose of removing excess material. We used the same principle as the undersides of the table where we used a sacrificial support, only this time we used clamps to hold it in place. And of course, we repeated the process on the other side. And finally, the fruits of our hard labour are realised. Me and my big brother Mike enjoy a hard earned Guinness sat at our new picnic bench. Hope you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and please subscribe to my channel.